Welcome back. Joining us on Week in Review, we have one of our very favorites in the studio, Mr. Wes Adams, state's attorney. How are we doing here today? I'm good, Kristen. How are you today? Good, good. Thanks for being here, Wes. I'm happy yeah. to be here, Stephen. So last week on the show, we talked about the arsonist selfie. What can you tell us about that case? Well, Justin got sentenced to 55 years. So a great job by Judge Silkworth to take him off the street. Uh, you know, he was really pretty dangerous. Guy goes out and willing to burn up the house. He, uh, he where he did it too was awful. He closed down the front door, all the avenues of escape, and uh, I'm really pleased that uh, my prosecutors did an awesome job putting that case together. Chief Fire, uh, Fire Chief Alan Graves and his team were fantastic getting us all the evidence, and you know, criminal justice system worked for Mr. Klum, and we won't see him anymore. It's great that we got him off the streets as well. Good riddance. As uh, I think everybody knows, heroin is a huge public health and public safety challenge here in Anne Arundel County and we are experiencing an overdose a day and more than a fatality a week at this point. Uh, the state's attorney's office plays a very important role in our efforts to combat heroin and heroin dealers and I wanted to ask you if you could please talk about your activities to combat heroin in our county. Well we've been doing a lot of things and, and Steve you know a lot of it's been in partnership with you. Um, from, the, from the prosecution side we all know about the big heroin bust from last year all those cases have worked their way through the system, and I'm happy to report that the, the kingpin, Mr. Fernandez, will be off our streets for 25 years. He's gone to jail. And the two lieutenants both are off the streets upwards of 15, 14 and 15 years each. Everybody has found the inside of a jail cell, with the exception of the two lowest people in the chain. And what they ended up in drug treatment court. You know, and, and that really fits with the mission that I think both you and I have been working on here in the county. Um, we've had some great success with the town halls, reaching out to, to the communities here in the county, just telling the story about addiction and how it is we can help some people. That education piece has been tremendous for our community. The feedback that I've gotten about it is, is super. Um, you know, and, and really the, that case kind of encapsulates the, the approach that we've taken both criminal justice and, and with you here in the county. Well, I want to thank you for your partnership in public safety because uh, as great a job as our police officers do getting these dealers off the streets, uh, it all comes to nothing unless we can properly prosecute these cases to convince judges and juries to put these people in jail where they belong, and you are doing exactly that. Thank you. And, and you know, our police, fo our police officers are doing a super job. They put in a ton of work. I know those guys were honored. Uh, with an award for the amount of time they put in uh, just a few weeks ago at the, the police award dinner, and um, it's just super. How about the uh, Colvin White case? Speaking of putting people in jail where they belong, Officer Larry Adams shot yep. in Arnold. Yep, last, last April, um, unfortunately, Mr. White made a, a bad decision, a series of bad decisions, um, and they, were, they resulted in Larry getting shot. Best thing, best news about this, aside from Mr. White being in jail, is that Larry's fully recovered. He's back on the force, and uh, we're all happy to have him back out there, you know, trying to work to keep the community safe. But Colvin White pled guilty to a attempted first-degree murder. Judge sentenced him to life plus 20 with all but 55 years ex suspended, which means Mr. White's going to see the inside of a jail cell for the next, oh, half a century. So he'll be a very, very old man when he gets out. And in stark contrast to what maybe some of the things we're seeing in the city, you know, Mr. White had been a, a frequent flyer with the criminal justice system. And, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, it took this event. But, you know, thanks to the work of some of the prosecutors in my office and, you know, my deputy, John Church, we were finally able to stop that revolving door with Mr. White. And now the door is closed. Well, that's great. And, and we do see that in other jurisdictions, situations where judges turn these criminals loose time and time again. It was recently reported in Baltimore City, the case of David Warren, who has spent his entire adolescence and adult life as a criminal with many gun charges and serious drug offenses, and each and every time turned back out onto the street. Yeah. And, you know, it's just even Unbelievable. Just, uh, it, it is really one of the main efforts of what we're doing as prosecutors and trying to bring a, a history of the offender before the judge. And, and I'm really pleased to say that a lot of our judges, when I mean, you talk about Judge Silkworth with uh, Mr. Klum, the, the fire selfie arsonist, um, even just this, two days ago, Judge Mulford sentenced uh, a guy named Mr. Brown 
to 53 years, gave him every single dime that he could, could give him on a sentence for a terrible domestic assault. He had had a criminal history, and you know, Judge Mulford really understood who the offender was and made sure that he couldn't hurt anybody else in the community. Well, we are, we are fortunate to have good judges yeah. in our county because a bad judge can undo a lot of very good police work and a very great deal of good state's attorney's work. Yeah. Well, we talked about uh, what's going on currently with our fight against heroin. What else can you speak to on a, on a general subject about the overall role of the prosecutor in the fight against drugs in general? Well, as, I was, when, as I was saying to Steve, we really have a three-part approach. I mean, obviously, the, the prosecution side of it is really what's important and is our, really our main function. But one of the things that's changed since I've come into office, and again, a lot of it is because of the approach that Steve and I both take to this, is we're really both out in the community educating. When you look at what the long-term change is for any epidemic, whether it's cyber safety that we work with or, or the heroin, um, it really comes down to education. It's, it, we manage the people that are in addiction right now. The holy grail of what we're trying to accomplish is can we keep people from entering into addiction into the first place? And so what I'm most pleased about is our efforts to get out into the community, to have these town halls, to work with the recovering addicts, to work with the affected mom, and bring that education and that awareness out to parents and really to kids so that you know maybe we can save that one from stepping into addiction in the first place. Our drug court program has been fantastic. I know Steve has, has worked to, to help us keep expanding it, um, but we're winning 20, 30, maybe 40 people a year. And, and as you just heard Steve say about losing one a week to uh, to a heroin, uh, to a fatal overdose, um, it's it's hard to win once the addiction has taken over. We have to win before it ever comes in. Very much agreed. Well, we appreciate all the hard work that you're doing, your office is doing, the strides we're making here in our community, and we thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing some more updates with us. Always a pleasure. You're always welcome back. Wes Adams, state attorney. We'll be right back with more week in review right after this. Don't go anywhere.